no smell at all. <laughs> but pretty. So how lovely to hear a symphony dedicated to Clara. And on the second, on the 200th anniversary of, of Clara's birth, 1819. She was a formidable woman. A, a, a pianist revered throughout Europe, enormously good businesswoman. She had a tremendous support to Robert. It was she, as much as the Schubert uh, great C major, which encouraged uh, Robert to, to take on the symphony. Very, very uh, influential. And she made the money. That's why she didn't have enough time to compose. She was too busy having eight children and making all the money. She, she would have worn the trousers if trousers were allowed in those days. So when we get to 1850, things are looking very rosy for, for Robert. He'd uh, escaped quite a few uh, bad times, as we heard last night with the Second Symphony, the sort of trouble that light lay behind him and also lay ahead. But things looked good. He had, he had a job for the first time as conductor in Dusseldorf, and he was on the Rhine, that great, that great German river symbol of Germanness, which is very important to Robert and to Clara. And so he wrote his most overtly cheerful and, and perhaps most successful symphony, the Rhenish. The first movement makes one instantly think of two other symphonies, number, symphonies number three in, um, in three time. It's the same sort of speed as Eroica, written when Beethoven was also in trouble. And the Schumann, a heroic heroic vein, heroica. And, of course, more obviously, Brahms, later on, writing dun, 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 using the same rhythm as his friend Schumann, his friend and protector. So there are three linked, three linked threes um, running through the 19th century. And they're all quite different, but this is as good as any of them. First movement is a sort of celebration of the Rhine. <coughs> the second movement he called a, a view over the Rhine, or, or I think of it as Sunday morning on a terrace, on a beer, in a beer garden, um, with all, everybody having a nice time, um, drinking a bit of beer after, after, after mass. And um, children running around, you can hear them very clearly in the second movement. Um, the, the light bulb. Um, it's after all these scherzos, you know, yum da dum dum da dum dum da dum. It's interesting to see him writing uh, a, a slow, a slow uh, sort of. Uh, it's actually the speed of a of a Mozart minuet. It goes back to the back to a minuet feeling. The uh, third movement is um, has has it not? He, he didn't name it, but it's often thought to be. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> It's often thought to be depicting the Lorelei, the, 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 the lady on the Rhine who, who, is, who in a castle up on, the, up on the rocks above the Lorelei passage, um, uh, stood, uh, sat combing her long hair with very few clothes on, maybe none at all, and, and just thinking how beautiful she was. It's a very beautiful movement. And the boatman would look up and there would be they would, they would go on the rocks and be drowned. But they had a nice, a nice view just before they were drowned. So that's a kind of, um, it, 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 it's kind of an idea of what that movement's like. Okay? Very lovely. The f there are five movements in this symphony. The fourth one is very extraordinary. One of the most, one of the strangest movements written in the whole of the 19th century, perhaps. It's, um, it's inspired by Clara and Robert went to Cologne Cathedral, a fantastic, huge, tallest cathedral in Europe, wonderful, wonderful building, um, to, to the enthronement of a bishop. And 
music there goes round and round and round. And Robert was immensely impressed by the ceremony and the, and the music that he heard. And um, he wrote this strange piece in a kind of a kind of very old style with clashing harmonies, which which seemed to uh, bring out what he heard on that occasion. Very very strange, extraordinary movement. And then you get a finale, which is full of joy, and uh, and back to the river and happiness and so on. Uh, very soon, things were not so good at all. Uh, he was not successful as a conductor in Dusseldorf. Uh, eventually he was fired, only two or three years after writing the symphony and, and correcting number four, 1851. He threw himself into the Rhine, tried to commit suicide, and was fished out by some fishermen, but uh, soon asked if he could be, if he could be uh, locked up in, a, in an asylum. And uh, within, within another three or four years, he was dead at the age of 46. Terrible, a terrible fate for a man who had suffered all his life from difficulties. But how amazing that despite all his difficulties, he's given us so much amazing music, not least these fantastic four Schumann symphonies. I hope you enjoy the Rhenish as much as we will.